Hi, my name is Coffee Summers, and I'm here with the National Hookup of Black Women Incorporated of Joliet. And we are asking a few questions to Dr. Dexter Arrington about the COVID vaccine today. Can you please tell us a little bit about yourself, Dr. Arrington? Sure, my name is Dexter Arrington. I am a practicing obstetrician gynecologist, and I do practice here uh, at Silver Cross Hospital. I've been on staff here for several years, and uh, I'm not an expert on the pandemic, needless to say, but certainly we have a lot of exposure because we take care of a lot of women in our practice who are pregnant, uh, women of reproductive age, women who are menopausal. And so we have a lot of exposure to patients who uh, are candidates for the vaccination. So I would like to first ask you, women are concerned now if it affects their fertility because I, I've heard a couple of women that are pregnant now weren't able to get the vaccine and so they were wondering, was it in their DNA or what, does it affect their fertility later if they take it? There have been no documented studies, and, and I actually reviewed this prior to our conversation, where the vaccination has affected one's ability to conceive or to become pregnant. Okay. And bringing up pregnant patients, which is you know my area where we see lots of pregnant patients, we, we often follow the advice of an organization called the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, and their recommendation since December has been that pregnant women can receive the vaccination even during pregnancy. Okay. And it should not be withheld from women who are considering pregnancy, nor is a pregnancy test required in order to get the vaccination. I can tell you I've had several patients who've gotten the vaccination. Their pregnancies have gone on to be very healthy. Okay. Um, another um, concern are with people that have autoimmune diseases. Yeah. Now, they take some patients may take more me medicine than an uh, average person. So does any of this have any waiver on, or any effect on them taking the vaccine? Or is the vaccine um, in a safe condition or safe enough for them to actually take? I think that's an individualized answer based okay. upon the person's uh, health status, why they have uh, an, an immune compromised system. You know, some people have uh, compromised immunity because they're on medications because they've received a kidney transplant. Got it. Other okay. patients or other people may have things such as HIV. Every, you know, medical entity, every medical disease has to be looked at individually just to see how the body responds. And I think that is an ongoing topic and, and it's something that that particular patient needs to discuss with their provider, so. Okay, yes, it's a very important that everybody actually speak to a physician outside of this. So I really appreciate that information. Now, a lot of, uh, I say millennials or maybe a younger patients may be reluctant um, due to some of the marketing that I've heard because they have offering free trips or putting your name in a lottery to receive the vaccine. Yeah. Do you know why they're actually pushing it this way? Or what would you tell a person that's say 25 to 35 to convince them that this is just, this is just a way to bring awareness to the actual vaccine? I, I think it is good that it's bringing awareness, but ultimately, you know, we were all, well, I was that age <laughs> at one point, I'm not sure how old you were, but we were all, uh, you know, younger at that point and you tend to think you're invincible and that nothing can affect you. You know, okay. I've heard many younger individuals say, well, if I get it, I'm young, I'm healthy, I'll be fine. But there are those individuals who have long-term effects. Okay. Sometimes, you know, their, their ability to breathe is affected for long-term. Sometimes they have musculoskeletal issues with movement. Some people, unfortunately, do die still from COVID, and people are still dying from this illness. You know, but more importantly, even if you are a younger individual or you're a millennial and you get COVID and everything is fine, it's not really all about you. Got it's it. more about the people you love because you could have COVID. I can tell you I've had probably 40 or 50 patients in the last three or four months, well, I'd say maybe since January, who I've seen in the office, routine prenatal care. Mm -hmm. We decide, you know, it's time for you to deliver the baby. Every patient gets a COVID test when they reach the hospital. And I've had a number of patients whose tests have come back positive and they had no symptoms. So you're walking around carrying the virus and you may be perfectly fine, but are you okay with your mother getting it or your mm -hmm. grandmother getting it? Exactly. Who may have diabetes, who may have hypertension, who may be obese, who may not be able to fight mm -hmm. the virus and may actually succumb to the virus. 
So it's not all about you. It's more about who you love and doing the right thing for everyone. But, you know, I think uh, particularly in, in our community, it's important to lead by example. Okay. And as healthcare providers, when we see patients, you know, I'm always asking my patients whether or not they've gotten vaccinated. And, and again, we talk about why they are afraid to or what their concerns are. Some will change their minds, others won't. But I think the more we talk about it and the more that they see other individuals, even if it's your family member, you can talk to them and say, hey, I got the vaccination. I didn't have any problems. Okay. I'm doing well. It's not that bad. It's okay to get it. And you can encourage other people to get it because the more people who get the vaccination will lead to us staying in this 100% fully open state, which we are finally experiencing after almost a year and a half of this. So, Okay. So yeah. what you're saying is as long as people make the active choice to get vaccinated, um, it's saying as a whole, as a community, we could bring the numbers down. Is that correct? I would say yes. Okay. We have to realize that we tend to have more individuals who are, are what we call essential workers mm -hmm. who don't have the luxury of working from home as a lot of individuals do sometimes. They still have to go to work. A lot of us will take public transportation if we don't have cars. So we're constantly exposed to people, individuals. Right. We have comorbidities, diabetes, hypertension. So when the numbers, if the numbers start to increase, you're going to see higher numbers in black and brown communities. And the way to avoid that is to get the vaccination. Okay, that's a good point. Cause I think a lot of people, when they see it on the news and they say, brown or people of color, they assume that they're talking about it being affected by us race, racially, but you're saying that it's affected because of our the way our communities are built. We have more essential workers. Sure. We get people taking transportation and we have more multi-generational homes. There are a lot of factors that go into that too. Okay. Not to mention that if you look at the percentage of uninsured individuals, black individuals, Latino individuals compared to white individuals, you'll find that there are, are more people uninsured. So the lack of health care, the lack of insurance, all of these things come together to actually lead to this whole disproportionate effect of, of COVID-19 yeah, okay. on the community. So yeah. I appreciate you taking time out to speak with us about it and the other hesitant people that, other people that are hesitant about taking the vaccine. It was my pleasure. Thank you. No problem.